All right, so I just got a package delivered with my brand new kind of dream tripod. Uh, I'm replacing my big, tall set of legs that's ultra lightweight. I'm gonna talk in this Approach in the Scene video about why this is my favorite tripod. And I'm gonna go through how I set it up, how I protect the carbon fiber on the legs, some real simple, cheap kind of DIY way of protecting and making the tripod more comfortable to carry and use, as well as you know what I'm gonna do for maintenance on this tripod and what I'd suggest you do for maintenance on your tripods. So it's gonna kind of be all about setting up and maintaining your tripods. And it's uh, just as applicable for those of you with ball heads and aluminum tripods as it is for carbon fiber. Um, Approaching the Scene is a series of videos that I'm doing each and every Thursday. I really want it to be a conversation about all things photographic, so if you have questions, don't hesitate to send those to questions at HudsonHenry.com, or you can log on to the website at www.HudsonHenry.com ATS. Uh, if you're enjoying these videos, please click like, please click subscribe, share it, uh, and with that, let's get to rigging this tripod. I've had this older Gitzo tripod with me. My, my absolute favorite tripod has been around the world with me a number of times. I've probably been using it for about 14 years. A couple trips to Africa, to the top of Denali, you know, on mountaineering trips in, and other mountaineering trips in Alaska, South America. It's just been an awesome tripod, but I think it's about time uh, to get another one. I've got a lot of, you know, things starting to kind of go a little bit wrong with it. Um, and so I ordered what I think is kind of the ultimate tripod right now, the Gitzo 3543 XLS. Uh, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to set it up, protect it, uh, lubricate it, make sure everything's dialed in with it, uh, and, and all the pieces that I put together on a brand new tripod just to sort of set it up. It would be the same for a ball head, but I'm going to set it up with my fluid head. Uh, and you know how you can do some simple things to protect a good set of carbon legs, whatever set of carbon legs you have, um, with just you know some some bicycle uh, road bike handlebar cork wrap, uh, a little bit of gaffer's tape, some good uh, synthetic lubricant, uh, some some grease that will just kind of go over where it's a good spot to grease your tripod. Basically, all of these carbon fiber tripods are pretty much the same, even the aluminum tripods. And I'm going to show you what feet I really like to set a tripod up with. So I'm just going to jump ahead, dive in. The first thing I want to do, you know, you got these beautiful car carbon fiber legs. I don't care whether you're using a Gitzo or Really Right Stuff or a, um, you know, any other tripod, Faisal, you name it. The first thing I want to do is kind of protect these carbon legs so that when I'm bouncing around through the wilderness or, you know, kind of climbing around on rock or whatever, or setting my bag down with the tripod attached to it, I'm not going to bang up this carbon. Also, you know, I don't find carbon the nicest thing to grab a hold of and work with. And I know that they sell, you know, really nice uh, foam wraps that you can buy for these. They're kind of expensive. Uh, the other thing about it is they're kind of bulky. They make your tripod, you know, bulk up considerably. I like just using a good cork handlebar wrap that road bikers would use for their bikes. And, and generally, I start down here near the bottom. I leave a little gap for the uh, Velcro on my tripod hammock. And also, if the water gets in here, I don't want it to kind of get into the metal part in the leg locks. So I'm just going to start by kind of wrapping this leg. And I'm just doing the outer leg, obviously. The inner legs are inside. And I'm just going to kind of just barely kind of overlap it each run around. It's, you just got to kind of keep the tail wrapping around too. And you just want to keep a kind of a tight pull with some pressure. I clamp it with my pinky finger as I go around just so that it's not getting loose on me. I wrap it around. I'm going to do the whole leg like that. thing I like about the grip tape, this stuff, is that it's ultra lightweight. If you buy the more expensive, kind of specially made tripod foam covers, they add about a half a pound to your tripod. thing I love about this tripod, and I'll show you in a minute, is that it gets, it's 
nearly 80 inches tall. It's 79 inches tall without a center column. I, I really can't stand center columns. Anybody following me knows my thoughts about center columns. Um, it weighs almost nothing, you know, because road bikers are super, super finicky about weight. This stuff doesn't even add but a, you know, a few hundred grams to your tripod, if that. <clears throat> and it's nice and low profile and thin and it feels good on the hand. It's cork, you know. It, it, anybody riding a road bike knows you don't want to have <clears throat> an uncomfortable bunch of grip tape on your handlebars while you're riding. So I'm going to kind of trap that. I've got it fully wrapped. I'm going to peel a piece of this gaffer's tape. I've stopped short of this metal up at the top, not by a long shot, but by a little bit. And you know, right now I realized that I've neglected to have a uh, pair of scissors here. So I'm just gonna grab the end of this and secure it with this gaff tape for a second while I run over and get a pair of scissors off my desk. One nice thing about gaff tape is, you know, you can always remove it without leaving any sticky residue. It costs a bit of money, but it's worth its weight in gold when you don't want to leave the same kind of sticky residue that duct tape would have. So I've got a little bit of a tail here. I'm just going to snip that so that I don't have a bulky spot there at the end. I'm going to grab this gaff tape and secure it nicely to the end of that loose piece of bicycle grip tape. I'm going to wrap it around so that it's not going anywhere. And I'm not putting it right on the carbon. I'm just putting it around the handlebar wrap. So I'm only, you know, I'm not putting any sticky stuff on the carbon. And I need one good long wrap. I'm not using the whole roll of tape either. I'm just using a little bit of it. So it's not that really fat bunch of tape. I'm just going to wrap it all the way around once. Ah, there we go. And then I'll use the skinnier tail. This stuff is wrapped over the top of itself, but I still want to make sure it doesn't come loose. So I'm going to just take that excess and just give it a good wrap down here at the base too. Wrap it around there just to kind of secure that tail that's loose down there. Boom. And now I've got a nice cork surface to grip. It's protecting that beautiful carbon so that it's not going to get banged up, uh, bouncing around on the rocks and whatnot. And the thing I love about this new Gitzo is these automatic locks. You pop them out, they stay out. You go to the end, they lock. You can come down to the second lock, they lock. It's really nice for putting your tripod more splayed out. So boom, there you go. And then, you know, as long as I'm working on this leg, they've got these nice feet, great for studio stuff, great for working in the city. Not my favorite for working in rocks and streams and stuff. Gitzo sends this little package along with their tripods. And all you got to do is reach through here. It's a little uh, torque screw. Thread that foot right off there. And what I like to use these days, I'll keep that around just in case I'm doing studio work. I like these little metal rock claws that Really Right Stuff has put out. And I'm just going to squirt a tiny bit of grease here because I don't want corrosion to get in there. I've got this synthetic uh, super lube. I'll give you a link to that, uh, this synthetic super lube grease. It's really nice for working with carbon. And I'm just going to, I'm going to be using a glove when I really do a grease job on my tripod, but I'm just going to use the glove surface there and kind of rub that on. And that's going to thread right in where that old foot was. And then it's got a hole all the way through it. So you can take an Allen tool and just get it nice and tight or get it back off really easily. Boom. Now that works really well on rocks and in sticky stream beds and stuff. It just has a nice grippiness to it. If I'm working out in sand, I'll pop that off and I'll thread on one of these spikes just because, you know, in sand, if you set your, your tripod in deep, and root it with spikes, and it's a lot less likely to shift as waves are rolling back and forth. So these are basically the two kinds of feet that I carry out in the field. I keep these, these, these rubber feet around for if I'm going to do studio work or work someplace with nice wood floors or something. Really like these little metal claws, though. That's my favorite thing right now. So 
that's wrapping up one of the legs, setting up one of the feet. Um, I'll also show you one of the nice things that this tripod has is kind of a built-in ratcheting mechanism. This is what's known as their, uh, gosh, what do they call it? Systematic tripods. I think Enduro calls it the grand stealth Enduro. Gitzo calls it the systematic. You've got this little ratcheting mechanism in this top plate that's removable. And there's a button that you press in. You can go ahead and grab this. If I was using a ball head, I would just leave this in place, thread this little protector off, and thread the ball head right onto this plate. But I want to use it with a fluid head. So I went ahead and got a Sunway Photo 75 millimeter bowl, which is quite a bit cheaper than the Gitzo 75 millimeter bowl. And you know, like in an order of twice as cheap. And I'm going to go ahead and drop that bowl into that place that that systematic top plate was sitting. There's a number of things that you can fit in here. Grab that little ratcheting adapter. You just press it in. It grabs the little screw. I'm going to tighten that up. And now I've just converted this tripod. Get it tight. And then lock it over. Just converted this tripod to a 75 millimeter bowl. So it's going to be set up for my fluid head. So I won't make you guys sit through and watch it. Uh, maybe I'll speed it up. But I'm going to go ahead and do that leg wrap on each and every one of these tripod legs. And then I'll show you how I lubricate it just to make sure that it's properly lubricated from first time out. You know, I know Gitzo probably did a good job of this, but I'm gonna show you that plus how I'll set up um, the fluid head on the tripod. All right, and so as I, as I kind of grease up this last rock claw, and I'm gonna have links to all the lubricant that I'm using here, this super lube, and rock claws, and this tripod, everything else. But you know, again, whatever tripod you're using, if you're using a carbon tripod, even if you're not using a carbon tripod, I just think that this cork bicycle grip tape is a really nice thing to have on there. It gives it a nice feel, it protects your tripod, it weighs almost nothing, and it's not that expensive. I think these are about, you know, nine bucks for a, a two pack on Amazon. I'll put a link to that too. I uh, love the rock claws. They're not super cheap, but they're a great thing to have, uh, as are these little spikes, which are easy to slip out and put on. They just need to have a little thin wrench on there or a pair of pliers along in the, the kit. And then uh, really, the only other thing I'd say is, you know, as long as I've got these gloves on, I'll show you the technique for making sure that your, your tripod's properly lubed. You're just gonna pull your leg out here and squirt a little bit of grease on this thread. And it looks a little light on grease to me, just on that thread right there. It's where that tightening mechanism screws into the leg. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that on each of the legs now that I've got a greasy gloved hand. You can get these gloves at any True Value hardware store. You know, they're just, they're just sort of surgical uh, latex gloves. For those of you that have a latex allergy, they make non-latex variety too for people that have a sensitivity. But essentially, just using a gloved finger and getting a good amount of that synthetic grease into those, uh, into those threads really is nice and protective. It keeps you from getting dirt, grime, and salt water through the threads into the internals of your tripod. Now, Gitzo, I've noticed, puts a little O-ring on here too, which is awesome. But a little grease on the threads, that's your general maintenance. You know, if you get out working in salt water with your tripod, you ought to probably disassemble it and make sure that all the grease and dirt and debris are out of it, and then grease these threads, like I'm showing you with this good non, uh, corrosive silicon lubricant. And I'm just gonna put those loosely back together. And I'll do the other legs, I'll speed it up a little bit and get right back at ya. Nice thing is you can just turn that glove inside out when you're done and everything's nice and clean. I got no grease on my hands in that process. 
I do a lot of work on mountain bikes, so that's why I have that gun with the grease. If you buy this grease, it's just gonna be in a tube, and I'd say just squirt it on your finger, wipe it into the grooves. Really recommend using the glove as it's just gonna keep you from getting grease all over your hands and everything else. And if you've got greasy hands, then everything else you do is gonna get all greasy and disgusting. And so I really like just having some cheap latex gloves around for that kind of work. So again, the reason I love this 3543 XLS is that it gets to be extremely tall without a center column. So this thing gets much taller than me. It goes up to 79 inches. You can't even see it in the frame here. Um, you know, it's just absolutely phenomenal for, uh, for doing work. Let's say you're on a hillside and you want to just stretch that one leg out down the hillside and get the tripod level at eye level. Well, having that extra leg section that takes this thing out to 80 inches makes that a breeze. Um, so the last thing I need to do here, I'm just gonna open them about one and a half sections. Last thing I need to do is set up the fluid head and I'll show you how I do that. It'd be the same way for a ball head. So I'm gonna set it here beside my uh, favorite old trusty head. A little careful since I'm on wood floors with the rock claws, I'm not gonna move it around too much. And my fluid head, I already have attached to this 75 millimeter bowl adapter. So this is the knob that you're gonna to turn to loosen the fluid head. You know, once more, probably should have done this before I took the gloves off. I wanna lubricate these threads on the adapter. Anytime I've got threads I'm putting together, I really like to put a bit of grease on. So I still have this glove. I'll just use the glove to kind of wrap it into the threads. And we'll wrap that up, call it good. And so basically the tripod, you know, stops right here and it's threaded into this piece. I already have it set up from my, from my last tripod. And one of the nice things about these Enduro or Manfrotto adapters is they've got some sweet little set screws in here that lets you just lock your tripod in without torquing it down. So if I loosen these little set screws like this, you'll see what I'm talking about. Loosen them up. I can just thread this thing right off the head and it's just gonna look like a flat head here. So essentially, you know, this is gonna sit in here and let me level that head. All I gotta do is thread it on, like I just showed you, boom, and torque down those set screws a little bit. That one's tight. They don't even need much. There's three of them and they're digging into the base of that head, keeping it from turning on you when you pan. There's two and there's the final one. So these three little set screws in here, both the Enduro tripod adapter that I recommend and the Manfrotto one have those set screws. All you gotta do is mount the head on that little adapter, screw the handle up from below. And you can do the same thing again with a ball head or just use the plate that comes on top of the systematic tripod. Um, I think that if you're buying Enduro, those grand stealth tripods that have this removable plate, if you're buying Gitzo or Manfrotto, the systematic ones that you can remove the plate and switch to a bowl, just gives you a ton of flexibility. If you wanna use a ball head, it's a piece of cake. If you wanna use a fluid head, it's a piece of cake. If you wanna get level really easy, Boom, piece of cake. And with the fluid head, obviously, you need to be able to level at the head. And then you can just, you know, this is the plate that comes with that Manfrotto tripod. And I've got my long uh, Hope uh, Arca Swiss clamp mounted to that with just the single screw tightened down. It's perpendicular to that plate so that I can drop my L bracket in. I set it here in the top of the fluid head. I loosen this little screw and tighten it back up and we're locked in place and I can put my camera in. The head is level no matter what I do. Put my camera in horizontal, pan and tilt, you know, make micro adjustments without losing level. Or if I want to flip to vertical, boom, flip to vertical. So that's it. That's how I set up. That's how I maintain my tripod. I would go through that process of loosening, making sure everything's clean and relubricating those, uh, those tightening knob adjusters on whatever type of tripod you have, Gitzo, Manfrotto, uh, Faisal, really right stuff. They all basically need about the same treatment, love and care. Um, I really think that the handlebar grip tape is a great way to protect your legs, particularly carbon legs. And you know, 
to, to, I guess the final thing I'd say is just that, you know, if you want to give it a fluid head to try, you won't regret it. So there you go. I got my brand new tripod all set up, ready to use. You know, one thing I didn't mention is one of these little tripod hammocks. It's a really cheap, affordable way to make your tripod even more stable. And it can be convenient to set lenses or filters in. But if you're up in high winds, you can just drop a big stone in here and your tripod suddenly becomes way, way more stable. If you want to move the legs in different dimensions, it's as easy to remove as just pulling a piece of Velcro off. Real simple. So again, I'll have links to all of these maintenance tools and the lubricant that I use, as well as the bicycle grip tape, everything uh, in the ATS links. I'll have a link to that if you look at the text on this video. So hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, again, if you have questions for a future approaching the scene, it's questions at HudsonHenry.com is the email. Uh, you can also go to the website at www.ats uh, slash questions, or what am I saying? www.hudsonhenry.com slash ATS. Um, oh, you know, one question I forgot to answer. There was somebody recently asked me, using the fluid head, why not use one of those three axis uh, tripod heads, the, the old video style three axis tripod heads. And I know Manfrotto's come out with some new ones with some friction adjustments. Um, you know, I think my very first tripod was kind of a cheap three axis tripod, the kind that you get at Kmart or Walmart. Uh, and I think probably a lot of people had that experience with those first ones where one adjustment is to just do panning, another is to do tilt. And then there's another adjustment that kind of tilts the camera up into a portrait position. For me, that's, that's sort of one adjustment too many. One thing I love about the fluid head is the simplicity of the way that the thing moves. You loosen those two adjustments and you can kind of pan and tilt gimbal style anywhere that you want to point the camera. Simple to lock, simple to open. And I like the fluid inside that head because it just makes really simple, easy movements that, that are just fluid and nice. And if you do any video, it becomes this great benefit. And even if you're not doing video now, you might find yourself doing video before you know it. Uh, and the fact of the matter is, at $130 for one of these heads at two pounds, it's really tough to beat the deal and simplicity and usability of this. I can't think of a single three axis one that's as easy to use, as lightweight, as dead simple, or that much cheaper. So I don't see a reason to go with a three axis tripod head. All right, so if you've enjoyed this video, I hope that you'll click like, click subscribe, uh, and we'll see you next week.